I was a quite, a, quite an enigma. I was quite a mystery. How will a woman be able to perform? Will she be able to lead these men who are senior to me in age, much more experienced, etc.? Those letters which prisoners wrote to me in thousands are in four iron trunks with me. They are my property. They are very, very precious. So I did not work for the government. I worked with the government. And with the government, for the people. Here I'm not here to lecture, but I'm going to show you. Show you what? 40 years of my experience in leading the police departments and administration governance and also on the international forum. We are straight away on watching what I've brought for you and this is the first time I'm making a presentation of this kind. You might ask why? Because you are special. <laughs> you are special and uh, you're the right ones to know this early on. And the earlier on you know, the better it would be. You will be achieving what I achieved much later. I have some leadership models for you, which I have, which have evolved through my service. And I've documented them. That is for your, uh, to understand that they're not now imaginary. They've all been learned, they've been lived, and they've got now published. Here is the part one. This is the transactional to transformational model. Your professor told me about where was my heart in it. My heart is at the right place. Thank God. So it's all, you will see how important the, Im the compassion, the emotional quotient, the IQ and the spiritual quotient, all these quotients play a role. Here is this part one. Have a look at this. What does it show? This is what I inherited when I joined the Indian Police Service. It was a very hierarchical model. It still is, but now it's getting mixed. Hierarchical model. Where is the police commissioner? Right at the top. And the people are far away. And look at the ranks. They have to go through so much to connect. And these were also the CEOs of the past, political leadership of the past, generals of the past, currently even DGPs of currently, even now, of the past. It all depends. So here is a hierarchical model I witnessed myself. And I became a part of it, and I was somewhere here. And imagine, so many levels I had to cross to see even my police commissioner. This was the way it was. So there were so many barriers and walls. And whereas, when I was here, the change I brought in, as I'm going to show you. Now let me go to the next one. This is called the creative leadership model. Where is the chief? Chief is right in the center. Chief is right in the center and very equidistant. Very equidistant. In no way, no way it weakens this leader. But he's equidistant. I've kept Gandhiji's face because that is what Gandhiji's model of leadership was. He was equidistant. And you see all ranks and all the people are even mixed. Even the people, that's your consumer. That's your consumer. That's your client. He's equidistant, all of them. For me, they were people. For you, they're clients. For you, there can be other ranks. For me, they were constabulary, the commissioner. Everybody's around here. But everybody's equidistant, which means everybody had the faith that they could connect with this. Now see the comparison. Now you have to choose. That's why I said no lecture. Every model is speaking a thousand words. So 1A, lesson learned, your takeaway. When you take over wherever you are, you will get to know where you are. But you will realize today technology has actually broken these barriers. They become non-hierarchical, they become flat. Because now when you do a meet, when you do a webinar, everybody's sitting equally and everybody's watching. Yet, webinar is different from in-person meet. So remember, remember this, keep this in mind. You may be beginning from here like I did, but that doesn't matter. You can be here. For them, you can be here. That's where I was. What happened with my policing is when I joined and that is where I start to become different. And what happened? When I joined, and since I was the, the first time they were seeing a woman in uniform leading the men there at, at an officer level, they were wondering, what would I be? I was a quite, a, quite an enigma. I was quite a mystery. How will a woman be able to perform? Will she be able to lead these men who are senior to me in age, much more experienced, etc.? But what I did was, 
I had no MBA training at that time. Even in my National Police uh, Academy, we started with two pages of management course, what management means. At that time, managers were never. My police colleague is sitting right here. He will be able to bear it, bear with. This was not an uh, issue in leadership. It was all about this leadership. We were always talked about this leadership, command and control. It was command and control. Here it was so, it becomes. So I became center here. What happened? It was quite a shock in the service, quite a surprise. I'm only telling you factual position that it, it and there was one school of thought which is saying, I'm breaking hierarchies and probably I'm creating discipline, indiscipline. Because here are the youngsters who can access. Though we had a rule of orderly rooms where anybody, any policeman could come and ask this officer, but it was by appointment. And if the police commissioner sitting here, the constabulary sitting here, which you're not, the, uh, the police commissioner sitting here, the, and the Darban would say, Satpal, Sida, Tez, Chal, salute. And then I would salute. And then I would hear. That's how my senior was, that's all the excess I had by appointment and by also uh, sifting whether I was the right person to come. So it's a very selective, orderly room as to what is he going to say. Is he safe for the police commissioner to be speaking to? So that was that at that time. Since I became right in the center, and I opened the door, and I said, anybody can come at any time. And this is the time to meet. That also, one school of thought was, here is a woman coming for the first time, breaking the rules, and um, now um, that discipline will be. On the contrary, we had fantastic results. Collaborative policing began, etc. I'll come to the results later. But you see, if you see, this is this was my policing model, which is a part of my uh, documentation. This is an example of my implementation of this. Look, this was Goa in Chogam during 1983. Chogam. Look how we are all collective. We had no resources. We created students out of cadets, traffic cadets, to manage the entire 40 kilometer route from airport to Fort Aguara, where all the VIPs of the world were coming in. How we collaborated, how we worked together. This could not have happened if I had not been in the center of the leadership. So this is what clear benefits. You win the, you win the hearts and minds of the people. You win the hearts and minds of their rank and file, and they're willing to do. and do the extra stretch for it. Now let's go to the other mod uh, picture. Here's another picture. I'm only selectively giving you two, two, three, three pictures from my police career to establish to you the benefits of being at the center of the center of your departments or center of your organization. Or mean, means center means equally, equally, equally distant and being open and transparent. This is how we created beatbox systems in Delhi in uh, those days, where it was a neighborhood beatbox. Any woman, man, child could walk up to this box, walkable distance, where they could uh, report to this policeman. And it was open. See the box number four? I had about 160 beat boxes created as Deputy Commissioner of Police, West Delhi. They existed then. They don't exist now, to be honest, to tell you. Because you might ask me later, so is it happening? No, it's gone. Because this system requires that kind of leadership. You don't have this, that, you cannot have this. Because these are ideas which came from the rank and file. Because you're all the time listening to them and finding out what, what, how can you work better. So this is called the beatbox system. Right policing is one which reaches your doorstep with an assured purpose. We did this, did this through an innovative system called the police beatbox. These beatboxes were contributed by the local community. We didn't spend money. Now you can't have a budget all the time for budgets. The budgets do, may not come. It was community generated. A light was uh, power, fans, chair, furniture. Everything was given by donated by the community. The key lesson here is leadership is tested most in how you provide for your grassroots functionaries. Why did I give them a beatbox? Because they were all the time walking in the beat, and they did not have a place of their own to sit. And people also needed to know at what time they could meet their beat officer. So there was a time fixed. And here they could come and equally, equally accessible. Part two is the 3C model of my prison reforms. Now for policing, I got an opportunity to work as Inspector General Prisons, and this is what happened. This is the way it was when I took charge. When I took charge, the option I had was to ask for a status white paper. What is the status of the organization? 
right? Now, in this case, this is where I asked for nothing, but I documented what I saw. I saw rats touching my feet because nobody was sitting in the IG's office. They were all rats and they were wondering who this intruder was. <laughs> Here, inside the prisons, there was total, total contamination, total corruption, water with milk, milk with water, one could not identify which is water, which is milk. And these prisoners were the servers inside and they were doing. All this has come from the feedback I used to take, collect and get, not collect, it, I, it used to come in a feedback box. I should celebrate. Here, you have an email for a feedback, or you have other sessions now. Then it was not, and you, in, in, in prisons, you can't have these emails. So I used to move a mobile petition box. A feedback is very, very critical if you want to continue to grow. Now, in the prisons, when so much is happening, how do I know? Do I create an espionage system? Do I create cupboards? Do I create one wing, another? In ke baare mujhe batao ke to ye naam, ye, ye baare batao ke mujhe ye naam, nothing like that. I wanted to be self-reliant. And also not depend, haa batao kya hua, haa usne bataya ka. To khabar ji idhar ka suna udhar, phir react karna. So no reaction. I used to move a pet petition box, a long box. You want to read about the petition box? Read the book. It's always possible. It's a whole chapter on feedback. It is relevant for you as leaders and managers as you join in. Feedback is critical. There was no difference between the night and the day. Because when I say no difference between the night and the day, it meant what you do during the day and what you do during the night was not the practice. It was night is day and day is night. And they didn't even have, by the way, wrist watches. Prisoners were seen sleeping during the day and they were all awake at night. Why? Because they were on drugs, many of them. And how do I know? For the first few days I went visiting the prison and I found everybody howling. It was like a zoo. And I said, what is this? He said, ma'am, they can't sleep at night. They need drugs. They need drugs. They need medicines, whatever, whether they were narcotics or otherwise. And I said, that's scary. When I visited, it's scary. It was totally like a zoo, as if the animals are howling and space. It's like the dogs barking on the, on the road at night. Actually, they're con conversing with each other. But that's the way it was. It started with the system of head counts and lockups, a place where occupants did not sleep at night for various reasons. Night sounds resembled that of a zoo, a place inhabited by humans to whom it hardly mattered whether it was day or night. This is how I felt when I first saw Tihar. Drawings show that there was no difference in the prisoners' activities between day and night. They could sleep through the day or keep awake through the night. It was exactly the same. This was, remember when you people also go into your new organizations, you too will not inherit the best. My su suggestion would be, keep a record of what you inherit. It's good to log yourself, make a personal diary and keep it. You never know what, when it comes back, maybe you one day write. May maybe you make presentations, maybe you address, maybe you become a trainer, you will have evidence. But it's not to criticize, I'm not here pulling down anybody. I'm here to show you stark reality of leadership and management. Unless you see it, how will you, will, how will you believe me? So I'm trying to show you a visual effect of what I saw and how it impacted me. And this is the way it was. Prisoners were attacked from all sides. Staff was attacking, judiciary was attacking, media was attacking, for police was, uh, people was, everybody was condemning, government was condemning, police was condemning. It was a condemned institution because they were all outside the system and they were like a vulture culture. You come and I see, and a magisterial inquiry is ordered. If a riot has happened or a death has happened or an injury has happened, there's a vulture which flies in. Vulture is, is the punitive authority. So that's how it was. Even the media was all the time saying to hell with, that's what happens most of the time. Everybody's blaming them. But what's happening inside, nobody's looking at that and why they were. This is what it became over a period. And that's, there's a film called Doing Time, Doing Vipassana. There's a film. And that's where somewhere it's, most of these activities are got fortunately documented. And this film has been made by two Israeli women. Have a look at it. It's on, also, I believe, on the YouTube. It's very interesting. It's been shown the world over. This is how it, the 3 Z model became. It became 3 C. How? It became 3 C. It was collective, corrective, and community-based. Without any white paper, without any complaints, without any agonizing, without losing time, I started my reform program from day one. Day one, when I start to walk the prisons, 
on my, uh, uh, through the every day. Every day the rule was enter the prison at 9 a.m. and walk the prisons to see what's going on. Earlier to mine, seniors were not walking, I've already shown you. So I could see, I could feel, I could smell, and I could chat. No, I asked for no paper reports. Not a single paper report saying, ye batao aaj kya hua, ye batao aaj kya hua. Kuch nahi, mujhe pata hai kya ho raha. Okay, the feedback box now was telling me, and I was walking the prisons, and I was never saying, tumne likha, tumne likha. No, that's good enough for me. Look at the amount of trust I start to get, win over 10,000 prisons inside. They felt, our madam knows what's happening. Ab wo kya karti hai iske upar, wo uski marzi. Lekin madam ko pata hai, and believe me, Koshine Jhoot Nhi Likha. Why? Because I'd won the trust of the people. They knew I was there for them and not for myself. I'm not here for my promotion. And by the way, they knew that, <coughs> that Inspector General Prisons was not a coveted position. Only those officers were then uh, sent in who needed to be put away. Big tall do uh, doors put away. So they, at some stage of my career, there was a stage when I was, I was thought to be put away. But instead of that, just see what happened. It became a 3C model. And what did we do? We worked with the community. We made panchayat systems inside. Everybody got a responsibility. It was collective for all. It was corrective the basis, and it was community-based. You see the society? And all that was learning, education, cultural activities, vocational training, festivals, meditation, job work, horticulture, libraries, welfare fund, moral education, prisoners' panchayats, innovative ideas. Media also was allowed to come. And then what happened? Here is this team. See that? Here's this team. And see this? IG is still at the top, but IG is so interconnected. How brilliantly interconnected. And what was the IG? Visible, interactive leadership. Sensitive and concerned. But you see, in the end, we're all sailing together. It became a 3C model. So this is what it became. See the comparison? And this is what it became. The vulture culture was out. There was no need for a vulture. There was no right, there was no dead body. There was nothing. There were no rights because it was, everything got, got preempted and prevented. Because when you have feedback, you are ahead of time. You're not behind time, right? You're not taken by surprise. I exactly knew, knew which barrack had what was happening. And then I teamwork as a ship. As a ship, we could share over a cup of tea and we could preempt. And they now knew she knows it. She knows it, they know it. They cannot just get away. So friends, this is how it happened. See the comparison. This is the reality was. And this is also based on prisoners' letters I used to receive in the feedback box. You'll be surprised to know I still have them. Those letters which prisoners wrote to me in thousands are in four iron trunks with me. They are my property. They are very, very precious. <laughs> so imagine it's uh, the CEO reading the feedback from, from anybody and everybody and then taking corrective course of action. Imagine that. This is leadership. This is true grassroots management. This is truly your heart and soul at the right place. And this is also loving your work. Devoted, it's like a devotional work. So this is what we were doing. Now the part three, it's called the PP model, prosperous Puducherry model, which you have visited. This is the first thing I did as Lieutenant Governor Pondicherry when I took charge of this. I got it removed. So when you do these kinds of gestures, you're sending a very large message to the people, to the rank and file, and to Raj Nevas itself, and also to the government as be that this is what is not my, goodness, my style of work. So instead of trappings, a lot of trappings, I removed the trappings. And this is the first model I just thought, this is very, very significant as an image. This is another, where we would be at the grassroots all the time, working with people, connecting with people all the time. And you see how it, it was together with, with people around in Pondicherry roads. And this is what it leads to. You connect with a communist person. This was a swachta worker. And in Pondicherry and as in Tamil Nadu, as you know, lovely color shawls are always given as gifts, as introductions. Like in, in North, we give garlands. In the South, they give these lovely shawls. And I used to receive so many shawls every day. All I did was always carry them in my car and stop by and give them shawl by shawl to the grassroots workers saying thank you for the, doing the most difficult work because what they were doing cleaning up the drains and keeping the city clean was the, was the toughest. And you see, when you connect with them, 
you have connected with the door. You connect with the common man completely. This is an IS officer. Secretary was somewhere. And she said, ma'am, and this was my one of my one-on-one meetings I used to do with officers. And she said, ma'am, but I don't have today a babysitter. So I cannot attend the meeting. I said, no, you bring the baby along. And that's what she did. She brought the baby along. I think she's the, she can go into the Guinness Book of Record. The youngest ever to have attended a lieutenant governor's meeting. <laughs> the PPB model meant, now there in prison it was a feedback box. Here it was a different story. So what did we do? We created, we created these open systems of all, anybody could write to, to, the, uh, to the government, which is the Raj Devas grievance redressal cell. All sources, direct, postal, open house, field, email, text messages, social media, everywhere. And there was huge hostility for all openness of the system because anybody could write to us any, about anybody and anything. And naturally, the vested interests were very insecure because vested interests were also being complained that our file is closed, it's been two months, it's not going to be closed, and you're saying, you're going to give money, file All this used to come in the feedback or emails or WhatsApp messages, etc. So, see, and that's why all these cartoons were positioned. These, see, all these cartoons, where they took away my chair, they wanted to make me run away, and see the jaru, the then chief minister was trying to broom, broom me with. All these are some of the cartoons I thought I'll share with you. It, there was great hostility. Please consider that to be part of your management skill. This is not to be complained against, but to be taken in the stride. Because when you do better and when you change things for the better, there will be people whose status quo has been shifted or whose interests have been hurt. So they will question, they will do whatever they can. They will do. You can, that doesn't mean that they dislodge you. But you continue with your sh uh, determination and the belief and the conviction and your commitment for what you are there for. My purpose was very clear. My purpose was policing for the people, administration for the people. What is the commonality in all the models I've shown you? And this is almost the last slide. Being visible. See, you've seen visibility. Had I told you in a lecture, I used to do this, and I see I tried to be visible, I cycled, but now you've experienced it yourself. This visibility is the key to leadership. Whatever you do as an entrepreneur you're taking up, being visible, you got five people or you got 50 people, you got to be accessible and visible, but visible to the people, visible to your clients, visible to your customer, accessible. This is visibility. Depends on the kind of work. Mine was administration. Yours is going to be entrepreneurship and business, as some of you would do, or, uh, or into other forms of management. This is being visible. Being accessible. If you see the commonalities, being very accessible, there's a time uh, for everything. Being agile is very, very important. Being strategic. Being agile means very, very strategic. And agility cannot come without listening to each other, um, collaborative thinking, uh, researching. There's so many things behind every, but being agile and being one with the common man. And that was called the PPV model. The point is, are you working for the company or are you working with the company? And are you working for the product? Are you working under the product? What are you, are you selling or you're promoting or are you meeting a need? I think all these are questions which you need to ask. As far as I'm concerned, I did not work for the government. I worked with the government and with the government for the people.